Does the $2,000 M1 Max Max Studio have a much worse cooling system than the $4,000 to $8,000 M1 Ultra? Dang, that's heavy. <laughs> well, today we will find out. On Friday, we showed you guys the full breakdown of the high-end Mac Studio and its massive cooling solution that is dual-sided as well as the M1 Ultra SOC that is massive. That thing is super impressive. And you know, the thermals are insanely good. It literally doesn't want to go above 60 Celsius no matter what you throw at it. Today, we will find out if this one is just as good because we know that this actually uses an aluminum cooling system that weighs two pounds less. So I'm curious, one, what does it look like? Is the heat sink much smaller? Do we have one fan or two fans? Also afterwards, we are gonna look at the actual thermal performance, what temperatures we get when we are maxing out the CPU, when we're maxing out the GPU, and if you're doing a task that maxes out both, is it gonna get really hot above 90 degrees Celsius, just like the M1 Max in the MacBooks, or does it still perform pretty well even though it has a much lighter uh, and less expensive cooling system. Enough talking, let's go ahead and get into this. So that ring came off much more cleanly than the last one. If you guys ever do this, please be very careful because the power supply is exposed. You can get hurt. Make sure all the power is drained out. Do not touch it. Do this at your own risk. Apple does not want you to be taking this apart. And take a look at that guys, the SSD is still socketed and we do still have that extra slot on the other side. This is the base model with 512 gigs of SSD. I'm not certain, but I assume that everything up to the two terabyte model comes with one SSD. And then if you get the four terabyte or the eight, it will come with two because it needs that extra density. And because those are actually the fastest performing ones, they're both similar. All right, guys, look at that. We definitely have a different cooler design than the M1 Ultra. The heatsink is different. The way it mounts is different. It looks like a much smaller assembly. And instead of having heat pipes on the back side as well, those two heat pipes, it literally just has a few little heat sinks right here. It looks like a nice mini version of that, but let's go ahead and check out the actual full heat sink assembly and the fans. Now it's helpful to know what I'm doing this time. I know that I have to take everything apart. And if you guys appreciate the efforts, please go check out our M1 Ultra shirts. We have some older ones as well. You can use the promo code M1 Ultra for 20% off. We would definitely appreciate it. Now, one interesting thing that I noticed is that the SSD is actually on the other side this time, on the right side instead of the left, which means that I actually don't have to remove it in order to take everything else apart and get rid of these front USB type C ports. I wanna also let you guys know that I did put together the M1 Ultra. I know a lot of you guys talked about it, that Mac Studio. Uh, it took about an hour and it was really detailed, but everything works just fine. All right guys, I got all of those ports out of there. Now it's time to break the heatsink free. That's what holds it down to the frame. And now for the moment of truth, let's see if I learned from the previous one and if I did all of this correctly, it is definitely way, way lighter than the Ultra. All right, it's coming out. Ah, come on. And bam, there she is. Look at that, guys. I don't know, does it look basically the same? Looks very similar. I mean, it is no longer front heavy though. The other one, it would just literally want to topple over. So this one's way more balanced. Now we have, you know, the fans up here. We have, uh, as far as fins, I don't know, maybe a little bit less dense. Maybe it's identical, probably identical. Let's go ahead and take these fans off here. All right. Once again, we have that wire that goes all the way across just so it plugs in on the other side. I'm not gonna be unscrewing that. And take a look at this, guys. Look at these heat pipes right over here that go on top of the chip and then come into the cooler. I don't remember seeing that on the M1 Ultra cooler that is made out of copper. I'll show some B-roll footage here, but I uh, could be wrong, but I just don't remember seeing that. Let's go ahead and take off this heat sink. Oh man, <laughs> I thought I was gonna get away without having to remove the SSD, but it looks like, nope, 
If you are going to be working on a Mac, you can't get away with it. You still have to remove the SSD if you want to get to that bottom screw. And now the very last thing holding this heatsink together. All right, guys, moment of truth. All right. Bam, there we go. Wow. Wow, what is, this is interesting. Okay, so look at that. We actually have copper here. Your actual plate, thermal plate here for the heatsink. It is made out of copper, but then we have aluminum on the sides. It looks like for the memory, if you guys see that, and it has a different thermal paste than what we have here in the center. It has the same black thermal paste that we had on the heat pipe section that split up to the back with the M1 Ultra. And let's take a look at the M1 Max. Interesting. Wow, okay. Very cool. You guys see right there, we actually see the memory modules, the RAM. That's why it's a different thermal paste on here and the actual soldered lid for the M1 Max does not cover the whole chip like it did with the Ultra. It just covers the actual uh, M1 Max right there, uh, and then you know the components that are built in, but the memory is separate. That's so interesting. And then we have this ring right here where it literally shows you the size of the M1 Ultra die. Look how much larger it is. So this whole motherboard looks very empty compared to the previous one. Uh, everything's just so much smaller, less components. Of course, doing it on the heat pipe, some stuff's rearranged. But look at that size difference of the M1 Ultra on the outside, which is completely closed off versus this one where we see those memory modules. And now the question is, does this aluminum heatsink with the dual fans and this different thermal setup a uh, much smaller die, does it keep the system as cool as the fully copper version that I don't believe has the heat pipes uh, and it's all solid copper? Uh, well, let's go ahead and take a look. All right guys, and now let's go ahead and take a look at the temperatures that we get with this cooling system and the M1 Max chip. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up TG Fan Pro. We'll have a link down in the video description. And they literally just updated this to actually show all the performance cores. We have the efficiency cores, the GPU clusters, airflow sensors, memory bank. There's 32 gigs of RAM, all the ports. That is amazing. Now the first thing I'm paying attention to is the fan speed. And as you guys can see, we're still running at 3,500 RPMs max with a baseline 1,100 RPMs for the slowest speed. But as you guys can see, Apple, they are running this, these fans at 1326, 1327. They don't run it at idle, just like the M1 Ultra. We're gonna be comparing temps to that one. Let's open up Cinebench here. We are gonna do the 10 minute stress test. Bam, let's go ahead and get started. Now we have a baseline about 33 degrees Celsius. Right away, we jumped up, up to 41, 50, 52. Okay, let's see if it stays there. Uh, with the M1 Ultra and that copper cooling system, it pretty much stayed at 49, 50. It was super low, uh, lower than this, and the fans stayed at idle the whole time. We're gonna see with the stress test, is it gonna keep heating up and have those fans ramp up? And if this is a cooling system that is not as good as the Ultra. Now, I know what some of you guys are gonna say down in the comments. Hey, you took this Mac Studio apart. What if you didn't do a good job? What if the results aren't correct? Well, I'm actually doing this test before I took it apart to make sure that I did not mess anything up and the results are correct. Now you also would need to know that this is the base model, uh, but the CPU setup and the wattage and the course, it's identical to the one that you can spend $200 extra for and upgrade to extra graphics cores. Now we're gonna run this, we're gonna run graphics, and then we're gonna run both of them at the same time to see what kind of temps we get if you're just maxing out both the CPU and the GPU, and if we go ahead and hit those higher temps uh, like we do with the MacBooks. All right guys, it has been just over five minutes and we are at 59 degrees Celsius right now. Still super cool and that is the hottest core. And then as far as fans, let's take a look here. Basically just above idle, a tiny bit above idle. Now with the M1 Ultra, the highest end chip, 20 cores, double the cores, it actually ran at 58 degrees Celsius. If you guys look right here, it actually just went down to 58 degrees Celsius. So it looks like even though the cooler is made out of aluminum, not copper, and it weighs two pounds less, 
the temperatures are still rock solid. It's like Apple is tuning this for 58, 59 degrees Celsius, practically the same, even though with our older Intel Max, these things would be running at 95, 100 degrees Celsius. So Apple could probably shut off the fans or run them right at idle or shut one off, but they're not. They're actually running them slightly above idle. So our 10 minutes are out. We're finishing for the last loop over here and we're still running at 59. It just hit 60 when I'm moving stuff around back down to 59 degrees Celsius. This means that if you're doing CPU tasks, Xcode rendering, photo editing, exporting thousands of images, logic, anything you do, this system will be completely silent. And here we go. We have a score of 12,310. And right when we got done, it literally just instantly dropped down to 38 degrees Celsius. And now let's test out the graphics. I have 3D Marks Wildlife Extreme with the unlimited mode. So it's off screen, should not be limited by the refresh rate or anything like that. And let's see what kind of temperatures we get. Our graphics card has been maxed out. CPU's at 24%, so it is doing stuff. 44 degrees Celsius is the highest that we see. That is pretty crazy. Most graphics cards don't even idle that low. And now let's push this machine to its limits. We're gonna start up Cinebench. Uh, we're gonna max out the CPUs right there. Bam, our CPU is maxed out. I'm gonna wait till the CPU hits that 59 degrees Celsius, its hottest point, which is mind blowing. And then we're gonna kick in 3D Mark's extreme stress test as well. All right guys, we've been running for about 20 seconds or so. And this is very interesting. First off, the CPU literally went from 58 degrees Celsius, 59. Now it's just steady at 60 degrees Celsius. The graphics, look at this, 42, the hottest core, the hottest cluster of cores, insanity. Our CPU is maxed out. Now, if you take a look at something, I just made a discovery. The GPU is not maxed out. It's running at 74% of its performance compared to 100 before. Now, if you guys remember with the laptop videos we did, we found that if you're maxing out the CPU and GPU at once, it throttles the system down. It literally throttles the frequency of uh, the graphics. Now, I thought that was because of thermal limitations because it was literally running really hot when you're doing that and the fans, that's when you really got the fans to spin up. But here, we're running at six degrees Celsius, literally he's not budging, 43 degrees Celsius, 40 back to 42 on the GPU, it doesn't care. But Apple is still limiting the graphics performance, even though we have no battery issues, we are plugged in a power and there are no temp issues. This thing is running insanely cool. Look, 44 degrees Celsius right now, we're still running 60, 61 degrees as far as the CPU, and the fans are literally basically at idle. That is insanity. So this proves, one, that there's definitely power limitations in play. We're gonna be exploring that in future videos and getting to the bottom of this, and two, that no, the M1 Max chips they do not throttle, they do not get hot, the fans don't spin up, even if you max out the CPU and max out at least as much as you can the graphics performance, that is just blowing my mind. So there you guys go, you guys gotta look at the inside of the M1 Max, Mac Studio, we gotta see how it compares to the previous teardown that we did with the M1 Ultra and how the thermal performance um, basically acts, which is shockingly, shockingly good. Wow, I am impressed and also disappointed as far as the graphics not reaching its full potential if the CPU is maxed out. And we'll see how that uh, will affect some real world tests that do actually max out the CPU and the graphics. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys click above to subscribe. We have so many awesome videos coming up. Check out one of those videos right over there if you haven't seen it yet. This is Max and I'll see you in the next video.